Hey, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I'm just going to get right to the point and be straight up real with you on this one. I do not want to do this episode. I did not want to get on here and record a podcast today for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, we we're supposed to have a guest. Um, and again, they canceled at the last minute. As a matter of fact, they decided just not to show up, which is um, really frustrating in terms of running a business and, and running a podcast. I just can't wrap my head around why people don't communicate schedule interruptions or they commit to something that they're they're not actually going to follow through with. I'm a firm believer in you know saying yes to the things you want to say yes to and no to the things you want to say no to. But if I make a commitment, I will honor it. And I just can't believe the number of people in in just recording this podcast that don't actually follow through with their commitments. It's it's incredible. So that's not that's not really what's going on though. That, that just continues to surprise me. The reason I didn't want to get on here and record a podcast is because last week uh, we had a project that was wrapping up that we got disastrous results on. In my opinion, um, it was something I put a lot of effort into. I put a lot of time, and there was a lot of excitement and build up around it, and it just did not meet my expectations, which are is probably the foundation of. Uh, the feeling of disappointment, right? Having expectations that or having expectations at all. Uh, but then of course, when expectations are not met. So the the title of the episode today, three reasons why your brain is a superpower. You know, I didn't want to record it, like I said, but at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity to actually record it and say, Hey, let's, let's lean in. You know, I, I don't want to do this mentally, but at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity to do it because we can talk about how to actually leverage our our mindset and our brains for our own good. How can I how can I turn this around and say no? A, I made a commitment, and B, the brain is a superpower. We can we can leverage the way it works for us, or we can just be victims to it and operate as robots throughout the day. And by no means do we want to do that as entrepreneurs. So I figured I would take this opportunity and just highlight, you know, what are some things that we can do to move forward in the face of adversity or challenge or when things don't go your way or when you don't meet expectations. So I, I was able to, I put together some notes. Um, I always have a backup plan in case the guest doesn't show up. Um, so luckily for me, I, I have that in place and I have some notes over here I can refer to. But I think it's also really important to say that you're in control of your, your mind, of your mindset, your outlook, what you focus on, where you put your energy. You're in control of all of that. So when things don't go your way as an entrepreneur, you have to realize that that's probably going to be the, the outcome of life like 99.9% .9 of the time. It is never going to go your way 100% of the time, and it's probably not going to go your way even the majority of the time as an entrepreneur, but it's about what you do with your circumstances and how you actually turn that for you and move forward. So three reasons your brain is a superpower real quick. It, there's three There's three that I've identified, and that is adaptability. We'll dive into these in a second. Creativity, especially as an entrepreneur, and resilient optimism. Now, that one is very key for entrepreneurs. So let's start at the top. Adaptability. I, I talked about it. You, you are always facing challenges as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. Things are going to come up. You're going to have problems with employees. You're going to have revenue issues. You're going to have profit. You're going to have challenges in your business. It is inevitable. It's part of owning a business. It's part of being an entrepreneur by nature that is just the way it works, but it's also part of being a human being. If you're not having challenges, you're not growing. Challenges are, I mean, the first mindset shift right there is challenges are opportunities. It's just how you perceive them. So why don't we, instead of suffering, air quotes to that one, instead of choosing to suffer and focus on the negative and focus on how things didn't go your way, flip that around and focus on what are the challenges? What did I learn? What can I learn? How can I grow? How can I get better? Ask better questions. So the adaptability piece is, you know, just, just being able to in the moment recognize what are the patterns that you're subjecting yourself to? Are you 
do you have a pattern, first of all, of focusing on the negative or the positive in a situation? So whatever the answer to that is, you need to know that and be aware of it. But then also, you can, you can use that for your benefit. So when you say, when you identify, okay, I, I have a tendency to focus on the negatives and say life is happening to me. All right. Awesome. Well, I've realized that now. So that's step one. And then what you can say is you can force yourself in that scenario. As soon as I recognize that I'm going into this pattern, you can interrupt it. That's a mindset discussion for a different day, but you can interrupt that pattern and you could say, awesome. Now I will force myself to focus on the positive and set a timer, list out all the things. So what a pattern interrupt is as simple as saying, okay, every time I put on my left shoe in the morning or I put my shoes on in the morning, I put my left shoe on first. Okay. That you have to force yourself to recognize that. And then also force yourself to get out of the zombie mode and say, okay, I'm going to purposely put my right shoe on this morning. So when you go down the stairs, you put, go to put your shoes on, you grab the left one and you, your brain recognizes it. You say, nope, pattern interrupt, stand up, do five jumping jacks, whatever it is, and then focus on the right one. So what does this look like in a challenging situation or a negative circumstance that you're focusing on? Develop some sort of pattern interrupt that you can leverage and harness in the times where you need to. So let's say uh, we use my example. The project didn't go our way. And there was, uh, so this morning I sat at my desk and I didn't want to do anything. I, I just wanted to figure out what was going on, why the results didn't come out the way they, that we planned them to, what happened. So instead of sitting down and not doing anything in the past, what I would have done was distracted myself with other work, meaningless work, no less. So not only am I wasting my time, I'm doing something that's probably counterproductive in the grand scheme of things. So what I do is now force, I'll force myself to list out the pros and cons. If, if you have a problem with focusing on the negative, you may want to just stick to the positives, but list out what are the positive things? What did you learn? What are the opportunities you can capitalize on? And just set a timer, do it for two, three, five, ten 10 minutes at most. You can really go on for as long as you want, but Focus on the opposite of whatever you typically do, and that'll change your mindset immediately right there. So what what I what I would say is, or what I could do and did do in that situation was figure out, all right, what went well? What can we re leverage and repeat in the future? Um, and then once I had that all done, then I said, okay, what were the maybe sticky points or the negatives or the things that could really be optimized in the future, but I'm looking at it from a different lens now. Now it's not these things, these bad things happen to me. It's okay. We have all the great things that happen and the positive outcomes. Well, now let's optimize too, because there is a place for that. I'm not saying you should just avoid the, the negatives at all and, and ignore the bad things and never get better at them. You have to improve your situation. That's just one way to do it. Um, so that's, that's adaptability in a nutshell. So the, the idea of adaptability is just saying that, you know, listen, things are going to come up. Life's going to happen. You have to be able to interrupt that pattern, interrupt your focus and put your focus on something that's going to actually make a difference for you. So from there, we can move on to creativity. I think this one's pretty easy for entrepreneurs. We're outside the box thinkers by nature. Um, I would say not, I'm not talking about like artistic or graphic creativity. I mean, like if you give us a problem, we'll probably figure out 50 solutions to it, to it before uh, most people could even get a sentence out of their mouth. And that's a superpower. I mean, if there's, if there's any superpower in the world, as far as what your brain can do, it's that one. And that can also be opened up by leveraging what I just talked about with the pattern interrupt. If you know you're focusing on this narrow issue and you can't see any solutions, well, you got to open up your avenues of creativity. A lot of times what I like to do, if, if I see that I'm getting stuck in a rut of thinking or I'm just focusing on one sort of solution or path, if you will, if I can't see more ways to tackle a problem or to take advantage of an opportunity. And this, this will happen too when you're in groups, even you've heard the term group think I'm sure that's when a group naturally starts to converge on the same sort of thinking because it's easiest for the brain to just wrap, wrap your mind around 
that one singular focus and then we can work as a as a group together to move towards it well that's actually a really bad thing to do when you're trying to solve a problem or capitalize on an opportunity or be creative the whole nature of creativity is that you have an abundance of ideas not that you're so narrowly focused on one ultimately you want to get to one or you want to pursue one at a time but you don't want to start with one narrow focus at the beginning so what i'll do is just a little exercise where i'll put myself in different perspectives. So I could say, okay, if I'm trying to see a problem from, from my own perspective and I'm focused on a solution, what I could say is what would a five-year-old think about this? Like what would a five-year-old do in my situation? Or what would an 85-year-old do in my situation? What would someone who has climbed Mount Everest 15 times do in my situation? And I just try to get out of my own head. If you get out of your own way, you tend to unlock your creativity because you're not so focused on your, your life context and your situation and your point of view. You're forcing your mind to get out of its own way and break those patterns. It's another form of a pattern interrupt that you can leverage in order to take advantage of a situation. Um, so that would, be, that would be a practical strategy on how to unlock creativity. If you're not really feeling creative, but you need to be, I think as entrepreneurs, we really do need to be creative. And it's about leveraging that creativity. So if you can't get there, make sure you force yourself to by going through one of these exercises. Those are That's just one that I like um, to use pretty frequently, honestly, before I start asking other people and for other opinions. Because you know, what you have to remember about that is you're asking other people for their opinions, whether they're on your team or strangers on the internet or whatever, you're asking people for their opinions, but they're still looking at it through their unique lens, which is beneficial but you don't know their context and context and they don't know yours. So by forcing your mind to look through someone else's lens, if you will, you're getting your own mind and body out of its way, but not inviting another mind and another, another center of focus into solving your problem that you can do that, but just understand I would go through taking yourself out of your own mind and body first before you invite others in. Because then you can also compare you, whatever you come up with to whatever they say. Uh, and then finally, optimism. You know, it kind of uh, counteracts what I, contradicts what I said earlier about <laughs> not wanting to do the episode and not wanting to do the day, at least in the beginning of the day, before I was able to get past it. Um, it I think entrepreneurs are naturally optimistic. And, and we tend to see a world of possibilities rather than a world of challenges or, or trials and poor conditions. Even in poor conditions, even in times of challenge, we, we tend to focus on what is possible. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about just being around other entrepreneurs and other people who, who think that way. It's okay to be a quote realist um, or, or a pessimist if that's your thing, but I think by surrounding yourselves with the right people who tend to see a world of possibility and not a world of, of struggle and, and negativity is really, really powerful for getting yourself past whatever the situation may be. So if you're not personally an optimistic person, I would highly suggest you surround yourself with a bunch of optimists. And if you ever get in a rut, if you, you're ever down or anything like that, these could be online. They could be people you text or call or, or get on a video call with. Put yourself in mastermind groups and meetup groups with people who are optimistic and just naturally positive. And they'll see, they'll even see your situation as an opportunity and they'll start firing ideas at you and, and all this other stuff. So I think that's really, really important. And that's one of the things I continue to make sure that I do is surround myself with people who are also naturally optimistic. I, I usually am myself, but listen, we're all human, right? We all have bad days. We all have bad moments and we all have poor results on things. So when I knew that, all right, things didn't go my way. One of the first things I did was go to, well, Hey, I went to our group. I, I went to our um, the what if inner circle. And I looked at the forum board and I just looked for other people's wins. And I did the same thing in other groups that I'm a part of. And I wanted to see other people winning. Other people winning motivates me to go win myself and go tackle the challenges of whatever I'm dealing with. Because I say, 
you know what? I didn't get the results I wanted, but these people are working, they're putting their head down and they're getting their results, which means I will too get my results if I continue to work and chase those results. So make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people who are optimistic, who are creative, who are who understand it's you have to be adaptable to be an entrepreneur. And those three things, those are really my take on the brain superpower. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to understand that this stuff will happen. And I know a lot of people do, but we all have those moments, right? I do too. I'm a naturally positive, energetic, upbeat person, and I too have bad moments. So it's not something you should be ashamed at. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't hide away. You should go seek out the people who can help you and the people who you should surround yourself with so that you can get past it and move on. It's not about how infrequent or how few bad days you have. It's about how short you make them. And I don't mean just get through the day to get through the day. I mean, like if you typically a bad day for you turns into a bad week, well, the first step is getting that to a bad four days and then two and then one and then a bad minute. That would be the ultimate goal. And then a bad 30 seconds. I don't mean you shouldn't feel emotions. I don't mean you should suppress it. And I don't mean you should just hide away and not recognize it. But what I'm saying is the, the quicker you can get past it and just say, okay, we're moving forward and we're looking at positivity, creativity, adaptability, and optimism, that's where the power lies. So remember, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I think that is so crucial in this situation. So let's wrap this up here. So we're talking about the harmonious business architecture. Where does this tie in? Well, you know, it starts with it starts with navigate. Honestly, if you know your mission and you know your why and you know your vision, it's pretty easy to get past feeling down about yourself because you know you're fighting for a, a greater purpose. You know you're on a mission to chase this vision and ultimately achieve whatever that outcome is. And this is just part of the journey. So if you have that stuff detailed out, it's so powerful to be able to go back to that, review it and say, nope, I'm here for a reason. This is just a bump along the way, but, but I'm here and I'm fighting for what I'm fighting for. That's something that I'm a huge advocate for having. And we just, you know, we, we host uh, a workshops around identifying and getting that stuff on paper so if you want to figure out um, what yours is, if you don't have that clearly identified and, and be able to leverage it for your company, uh, reach out, let us know. I'll invite you to one of our upcoming workshops. We host them one, once a month. And I would love to have you have that power for when you're in this sort of a situation. The other part of the architecture we're talking about is definitely um, twofold. It's inspire and uh, home. So it's you yourself as a leader. How do you show up? Because if you show up in a terrible mood, your people are going to, see that and they're going to be in a terrible mood it's going to rub off it's going to destroy your whole culture so how do you show up in peak state every single day so that your people want to follow you they don't want to follow someone who's droopy and miserable they want to follow someone who's a winner and a leader that's what inspiration is all about uh, and then the flip side is is the home humans optimize in a meaningful environment you want to be able to recognize this in your people if you know some of your people are having a bad day you need to have the tools and the resources to flip that around for them so that they can get to their next level and they can contribute in a meaningful way to themselves, to their team and to your company as a whole. So a, a lot of different parts of the architecture today, but first and foremost, it's it's about recognizing and it's it's not about saying it's a mental health issue. That's, that's not at all what I'm talking about. What I'm saying here is what you focus on is what you get more of. So if you focus on the negatives, you're gonna get more negatives. If you focus on, or if you admit, okay, didn't go as planned, that sucks, but let's focus on the positives and how to turn it around. Well, you get rid of all the negative emotions and you get yourself past what you need to so you can move to that next level. So those are those are my tips for, uh, you know, or my reasons why the brain is a superpower. That's how it ties to the harmonious architecture. And I'm excited to move forward, honestly. You know, at the beginning of this episode, as I said, I wasn't in the best of moods, um, but just just being able to talk it out and like i said surrounding yourself having the resources to go to other people for them to lift you up and help you get past that situation is so powerful so i don't know about you but i'm ready to go tackle the day and tackle the next problem so stay adaptable creative and optimistic and you will get past any challenges and leverage the superpower of your brain 
to get past whatever you're facing in life. Use those pattern interrupts and get past that situation. I'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. This was a good one, and we'll be back with a guest next time. See ya.